across your legs. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Schanzer. I compose the music you'll be listening to tonight. The last time this piece was performed was, uh, the premiere was in the kitchen, at the kitchen in 1999. Before the first performance, the kitchen organized a panel discussion on artists' responses to genocide. <clears throat> at that uh, panel, a member of the audience asked me if I considered this a political piece. At that time, I said, I don't. This is a very personal piece for me. I have a piece called No More Enthrall, which was written to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the liberation of the Nazi concentration camp at Buchenwald, which is where my father was a prisoner. And that dealt with resistance, liberation, the fact that the struggle against fascism continues into the present. Well, <clears throat> fast forward 25 years, and unfortunately, the simple act of retelling the survivors' stories in their own words has become a political act. Today, we are, have many who deny the Holocaust, and since it's a lot farther away in time than the last time we performed it, they're getting more traction with young people, and perhaps even more in insidiously, you have right-wing politicians around the world who are trivializing the Holocaust by comparing it to mundane, everyday events. So the, both fascism and anti-Semitism is on the rise. I'd like to uh, dedicate this performance to the memories of my mother and my cousin Rita. They were both alive then. Uh, Rita actually was able to make the performance. Uh, my mother wasn't well enough. Uh, I also want to dedicate it to the memory of another survivor, Israel Shahak. Shahak was one of, is one of the first Israeli-Palestinian rights activists. He was born in 1933 in Warsaw. Uh, he, his mother, and his father <coughs> survived the liquidation of the Warsaw Ghetto. Uh, his father was subsequently quil killed in a smaller concentration camp, and he and his mother were sent to uh, Bergen-Belsen in 43. After liberation in 1945, they emigrated to Palestine. Shahak grew up in Israel and became a professor of chemistry at Hebrew University. After the 67 war, he became much more politicized and started fighting on behalf of the rights of the Palestinian people. <clears throat> He had nothing but scorn for the Zionists who tried to use the Holocaust to try to justify the Israeli persecution and oppression of the Palestinians. I can't even imagine what he would say today if he was still alive to witness the mass slaughter in Gaza. Finally, I'd like to thank Roulette for allowing me to present this piece again. The first time I was on the Roulette series was 1987. They have been, played a big part in my artistic development and the artistic development of many of my colleagues. And I'm very happy when I look at the calendar and see there are many young artists who I don't know and have never heard of. So they continue to do it for new generations. So there's uh, information on the back of your programs on how you can support them financially, and I encourage you to do so. And then I'm just going to let these wonderful musicians bring this piece to life.
Mom. Mom. What happened when the war started? Well...
are killed, not made. In that bombardment, there was so much screaming and commotion that I was separated from my parents, my sisters, and my one brother. <laughs> remember how I came to Livor. <laughs> Hitler had divided Poland. California was in the western part, controlled by the German and live both was in the eastern part controlled by Russia I'm the 
Till I came back to Poland after the war, did I know that they are all dead? One of the people who was working in our bakery, he saw my father. And he said he would hide him, but not with my mother. A woman is harder to hide. My father said that he wanted to go back to his home because he wants to die in his own bed. But he never did. The hotel was taken by the Nazis. I never saw them again. 
mom and cousin. What happened to Eric during the war and afterwards? Well, your father was a successful businessman in his town. So when the Nazis came, he couldn't hide. But he bought Aryan papers for his wife and children, Eric and Vera, and sent them to Warsaw to live as Christians. Well, yes, they had Aryan papers. And I guess everything went well until somebody got suspicious. And I guess the only reason Eric was alive is that he was playing outside when the Nazis came. So they took on Freda and Vera. Later, a priest found Eric living on the street and took him to a Catholic orphanage. The priest really took care of Eric, and so was a very nice guy. After the war, your father went to Poland and got Eric and took him to France where Aunt Freda's brother lived, and Eric stayed there. And then together they came to the United States. They settled in Buffalo, and Eric was working in the liquor store and he picked up something heavy and had to be taken to the hospital. That's how they found out he had leukemia, and then it went fast. The morning before Eric died, I was with Dad in the hospital. And I was very tired. And he said, go home and rest. And I dreamed that Eric was dying. I took a taxi to the hospital. And a little later, he died in Dad's arms. And Dad threw himself on him. And that was so awful. And later, one evening, he said that he heard Eric calling him. So I went again, and he was lying on the floor. And it was very, very sad. To have one son survive and then die, oh, that's a terrible thing. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Schaefer's family. I just can't imagine that. But I only knew who he was for the second half of his life. The only thing I saw from the first half was a picture of him. He kept in his
was he very strict? He didn't eat in our house, but I don't think so that he was strict. When we were little, grandfather came to give us Hebrew lessons. So all I remember is always that I hid under the table. So what happened when the war came?
happened when Bielsko was occupied? Well, at first, not much. It took a few months until the administrators came in and the Gestapo and all that. We were still in our apartment in the middle of town and we stayed for a Did he get back to his family in the ghetto?
So my father's family, did they get to Warsaw? Oh yes, they had some Marian papers And I guess everything went well Until someone got suspicious And I guess the only reason Eric was alone story that Vera wanted to stay with you. At that time Vera listened to me Wherever you go I go with you And I said well you'll go wherever your mother goes So when we were the time came for them to leave and Vera said no I'm not going to Warsaw I'm going wherever my cousin is going and your father and Aunt Frida said no you can't This was strange coming from her because she was a very immature little girl. And when she said that, I couldn't believe it. It just didn't sound like her. So of course the parents said you go wherever we send you and that was it. It must have been hard for my father to live with. Well, he did the best he could. It was rough. I 
was so lonely in the big New York. And there I was on the top floor without much language or anything. But the first thing I knew, Ida called from Montreal that we have a relative named Yeti in Buffalo. And that's how I came.
It's just not possible. You can't make up for the Holocaust. It's just not possible.
just wanted to be able to sit outside or by a window on a nice day. He said very little, but he would always say it was a pleasure. Dad survived the war through his will. I always thought that he survived because he feared death. But in those final weeks, I understood that wasn't it.